Hi everyone, welcome to this week's new video at Visiting the Dutch Countryside for the ones who are new here. Hi, welcome. My name is Manon and I am Dutch and at Visiting the Dutch Countryside we are going to discover the Netherlands beyond the crowds with me, your favorite local. So, this week's video is going to be about the city of Brille, but most importantly its importance to the fact that the Netherlands is a free country nowadays. So, the Netherlands wasn't always independent and the city of Brille played a really important role in that matter so that is what we're going to be exploring today so if you're interested in one learning about a beautiful city but also two learning about some cool history of the Netherlands then yeah this is for you don't forget to like comment share and subscribe with the little notification bell so you do not miss out on any of my other upcoming videos you can also join me on my patreon linked in my bio Big thank you if you do that. And let's head into the video. It's the beginning of the year 1572. What is currently the Netherlands was occupied by the Spanish crown, as was the current city of Brille or Den Bril at the time. The people in the lowlands weren't that happy to say the least, and the Eighty Year War against the Spanish started back in 1568. The Eighty Year War was a battle that took place in the Habsburg Netherlands or Spanish Netherlands and was fought against the world power. The Spanish Kingdom, which was led by King Philip II and later on the Third and Fourth. And you might know about the Habsburg. You know, the Habsburgs were those that really inbred family in Europe, you know, the ones with the chins. So yeah, good times. So on the 1st of April 1572, Willem II van der Mark, also named Lumi, and Willem Blois van Treslong captured the small city of Den Bril with their water beggars. But why was the capture of Den Bril so important? How did it happen? What led to it? And who were the water beggars and beggars? It is said that around 200 Dutch noblemen went to Brussels in April of 1566. This is when they supposedly begged their governor, Margaret of Parma, to stop with the brutal persecution of Protestant people. Many people switched from the Catholic Church to the new Protestant faith, which was punished with that in this part of Europe at that time. At that time, Margaret of Parma was ruling the Spanish Netherlands in the name of her half-brother, Philip II. The story goes that an advisor of Margaret of Parma said that she didn't have to listen to these noblemen because they were only beggars. The term geuze was another term for beggars in Dutch. So it is said that the noblemen then started using it as their battle name. In the Dutch regions, the name is soon catching on with the general population and more and more people started calling themselves Geuze as a resistance movement against the cruel persecutions of people who changed faith. Now, there were plenty more problems at that time in the Spanish Netherlands, but the persecution of Protestant people was definitely one of them. Hendrik van Brederode, a Dutch nobleman, is nicknamed Groot Geus, or Large Beggar or Tall Beggar, and more and more people are volunteering to become soldiers for the battle for freedom of religion amongst, you know, the other parts in being an independent country. The castle of Hendrik in Vienna quickly became the center of the Geuze resistance. Negotiations for the freedom of religion, amongst other things, failed, so Groot Geus and his army tried to capture cities on the coast of the Holland region and Zeeland from the Spanish. Unfortunately, they didn't succeed, but they did manage to capture the city of Zethoogenbosch in Brabant or Den Bosch. The army then tries to get a hold on Amsterdam, which is when William of Orange or Willem van Oranje stops them. Now, this is when the beggars were very much disappointed, mainly because Willem van Oranje, who was the influential stadtholder from Holland, Utrecht and Zeeland, has criticized the persecution of Protestants. So they saw him as the perfect leader for the resistance against the Spanish crown. Unfortunately, at that time, Willem is not ready to use violence against the Spanish King Philip II, which is a shame, really. He deserved it. Luckily for everyone who is living in the current Netherlands, he did change his mind. And the Spanish King has himself to thank for that. So the Catholic Spanish King Philip II sent the brutal Spanish Duke of Alva to the Netherlands to make sure the persecution of Protestants could be turned up a notch. And that is when Willem van Oranje had enough and got ties. In the meantime, the Duke of Alva continued his brutality and even founded the Raad van Brute or Council of Troubles a tumult in Brussels on the 5th of September 1567. Because of him, more than a thousand people were executed. Bruder of Orange flees soon nowadays Germany in Dillenburg. And he is also convicted. All of his possessions are taken away from him and his eldest son, Philip, is taken hostage to Spain. 
Needless to say that any of those ties between the Spanish and Willem are nowhere to be found anymore. Willem is now entirely fed up and he and his brothers plan an invasion. They sacrifice the entire family fortune to create a strong army and they initially succeed. The first victory of their army was by the town of Heilige Lee in the Groningen region on the 23rd of May in 1568. This is the first victory of the Dutch rebels and Alva, you know the brutal duke, wasn't a fan of that to say the least. As a revenge, he ordered the execution of 18 nobles in Brussels. A few days later, he did the same to the Count of Egmond and Earl of Egmond and Earl of Horne. Needless to say, this wasn't a smart decision of the Spaniard because people were pissed to say the least, including the Waterbeggers, who are now joining the rebellion led by William of Orange. The Waterbeggers are, besides people who were fed up with the Spanish crown, also people who had to flee from the Spanish. So by then we have the water beggars and the beggars. These were often named forest or wild beggars as they were fighting the Spanish army on the land. The water beggars get so-called capebriefen or letters of mark from William of Orange, which gave them permission to overpower and capture enemy ships. And because of these letters, they weren't pirates, but freedom fighters. The original plan of William of Orange was that the water beggars would give the loot to him, which they initially did, until they didn't, and <laughs> found out how much money they could make from this. So quite a few of them definitely eventually became pirates. They were active from Holland to the Vodden Sea and Zuiderzee and Zeeland. In 1571, Lumi, who is important in this entire story, became the commander-in-chief of the fleet of Waterbeggers. He is infamous for his raids. So, after 1568, which is when the first victory of the army plays, four years of basically silence followed. They did capture ships and all, but they didn't capture any new city and people were starting to lose faith. And that is when something extraordinary happened. In 1572, Elizabeth I, the English Queen, forbade the water beggars from staying any time further in the English harbours. Which sounds kind of cruel, but we needed it. So they were soon roaming in the North Sea. They then set sail to northern Germany, but because of a storm they had to change plans and eventually made it to the estuary of the Meuse River and to the coast of Den Brühl, with dozens of ships that had in total between 600 to 1100 people, depending on your source. And then the much needed luck strikes. Local boatman Jan Pieterson Koppelstok sailed to the waterbeggers and informed them that there's only a small Spanish garrison left inside the city and that they could easily take it. The other Spaniards had just left Den Brühl because they had to fight unrest in another part of the Netherlands. So when Lumi and Willem Blois van Treslong hear that there are barely any Spanish left, they decide to capture the city. Louis first sent Koppelstok, the local boatman, to the city council to say that the water beggars were laying in front of the coast and that they were with a lot of people. Louis and Van Treslong demanded the surrender of Den Brühl from the city council, but an answer did not come. So the water beggars went to the North Port, Northern City Gate, and claimed the city in the name of the Prince of Orange and yelled, In the name of Orange, open the gate. The answer from the mayor, Koekebakker, didn't come, nor did the city council agree to surrender. Meanwhile, inside the city, people are starting to panic and fled the city from the side port, Southern Gate. When Louis found out about this, he sent soldiers to the side port and ordered the North Port to be set on fire. The men used a wooden mast to knock down the gate. They succeeded, the city council surrendered and the Spanish flag went down, but the Prince of Vlag of Orange went up. Den Brühl was the first city in the Netherlands that declared them to be against the Spanish king, Philip II. So the water beggars take Den Brühl in the name of Orange, even though Willem of Orange didn't even know it happened and didn't order it. But I don't think that he mind. The brutal Spanish Earl of Alva heard of the matter and said it was not worthy that he lost Den Brühl. Yet the Spanish did try to take back Den Brühl a few days later. On the 5th of April, city carpenter Rojas Mewes prevented the recapture of Den Brühl by cutting open the new lance of sluice, which inundated the farmlands around the city. So Den Brühl is the first city that is officially freed from the Spanish and stayed that way. And little did the brutal Spanish Duke of Alba know, because soon the revolt was spread out all across the Netherlands again, and people had faith. So two months after Den Brühl was captured by the water beggars in the name of William of Orange, 26 more cities already adjoined themselves with the fight against the Spanish, and it kept on happening. Of course, the Spanish army fought back, but eventually the Netherlands finally became independent in 1648 when the Peace Treaty of Münster was signed. This is when the Republic of the Seven United Netherlands was officially born and recognized as a sovereign state by Spain. And this was a very important step because Spain saw the Netherlands as rebellious Spanish nationals for the last hundred years during the fight. So, all because of the luck that they were able to capture Den Brühl, 
because the Spanish army had to fight unrest somewhere else in the Netherlands. We are the country that we are today, with its ups and downs, but <laughs> we are an independent country. So that is how the capture and freedom of the Bril, or Brille in today's name, was the important puzzle piece in the Netherlands finally becoming a sovereign nation. So fun fact, every 1st of April, which is when Brille was freed from the Spanish, is celebrated yearly by the people from Brille and visitors from the entire country come to celebrate the event with them. The streets in the center of Den Bril, the city goes back to its name of that time, are covered with straw, fishing nets and 16th century clothing is dried in the streets. The people of Den Bril walk in 16th century clothing, fishermen shout the words fresh fish or fresh fish, and laundresses were rushing at the waterfront. Also, the association of the 1st of April has this cool reenactment of the water beggars against the Spanish army, called Om de Sleutel van de Stad, or For the Key of the City. After that, the party is on in Embril, where the Spanish, Waterbeggar, and the people of Embril all party side by side, which is definitely not the real way of how 1572 ended, of course. But luckily, we are able to end it this way in the Netherlands in 2022. Thank you so much for watching this week's video about Brille and its importance to the Netherlands being a sovereign nation today. So I hope you learned something about it. Want to visit Brille, which you can because it's still a very, very beautiful historic city, as you could see. I created a post about things that you need to do in Brille. It's also linked below because I'm nice. But yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe with the little notification bell so you do not miss out on any of my other upcoming videos. Big thank you to my Patreons, and I will see you next time.